So, what's happened this week? Let's start with the good stuff, or the big changes. First one, British exit. My viewpoint on it is quite simple, that we do not trust the, well, I do not trust EU representation or the United Kingdom representation. They're all self-serving. The same people transfer between the two. So a failure in British politics becomes a failure in the EU and vice versa. So for me, I don't like any of them. I think the whole thing needs overhauling. When you have three members of, say, the Arthur Scargill family uh, working in the EU, is working the right word? I don't know. I don't, cause I don't think they actually do work. Um, but they, they get paid a lot of money for not doing a lot. Um, the gravy train issues but I think the whole thing wants overhauling not just the EU but the actual UK system the EU wouldn't have happened without the parasites in the UK also pushing forward for it as well they've both done it and as such don't just think oh well we'll get rid of the EU it's all going to be great and fine it's not look at who's, who your politicians are they're not great um, so that's the British exit so that, we've got the British exit out of the way and my own view is the whole thing was overhauling. I'm not going, oh, I'm pro this or pro that. I'm like, look, the, the wheel's fallen off the car. Let's have a look at the whole thing. Don't just assume that Theresa May becoming the next prime minister is going to fix things. <laughs> uh, don't even start me on Theresa May, please. Uh, next thing is, Duterte has taken his oath and become the Philippines president. Um, I think big changes are coming. They're already happening. Uh, the drug trafficker or well, drug dealer Jaguar was killed in Cebu. Um, and there was a funny thing. There's people say, "Oh, look, there's lots of people at his funeral." If you look at how a cartel works, they have entire communities that are backing them because they receive money off them. It's where you get your hitmen from. It's where you get your people do your transportation and everything else you're creating a secure nest for yourself so don't assume the guy was a fantastic guy or whatever it will be to specific people but uh, if he's actually trafficking drugs and dealing in drugs he's bringing misery to others so I'll leave it at that but the next thing is you've also got the side that people are handing themselves in on mass um, in Cebu there was actually people arguing over who's going to um, give themselves up first because they're queuing to actually hand themselves into the police because they're worried about being killed because once this um, uh, what do you call it honeymoon period of moving into the uh, president's role has stopped then the culling will begin um, and I'll say it's culling because I think it's exactly what's going to be happening. Um, my my issue with this is, my personal issue is, it's not giving people enough time to change. Um, I'm not a fan of drug traffickers or whatever, but I understand poverty in the Philippines. So I agree it's going to stop, but at the same time, killing everybody that's involved in it, you may actually be better off trying to move them into something more um, productive. Uh, I don't know what the long term plans are or if it's simply just kill everybody um, but the whole point is I think there needs to be something drawn out that actually moves people into a better environment because it may be beneficial to everybody um, short term though I can see a lot of the, uh, the bigger fish uh, being wiped out so we'll wait and see wait and see um, from seeing the problems that things like rugby glue and shabu and stuff that affects the Philippines, I can understand why it's going to be hit pretty hard um, because it is a major burden on the Philippines and its people. Um, so something has to happen. So, okay, there's that stuff. Oh, and. One of my um, YouTube followers, um, Connor, sent me this. Um, it's actually an egg, egg cup with salt. It's a bit of a 
a bit of a joke relating to my Volkswagen van. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool to receive that. And what else did I do this week? Oh yeah, I got somebody sent me this. Um, I when I say somebody, I mean a company. Um, so I've got a blender to review this week as well. So that was a nice thing that happened. Bad things that happened. The van um, had a bit of a fit on last Sunday because I was hoping to have some more video footage for this week. Uh, but what happened is we got to the next roundabout and there was steam coming out of it, smoke coming out the back. Um, partially my fault because it over filled the oil by accident, but also it hadn't been running well the last week, but it decided I'm not going anywhere today. Um, so last Sunday, instead of getting video footage and getting photographs of three different towns in Spain, I ended up crawling under the van and emptying the water system because there was a bit of a blockage in the the uh, cooling. That was then followed with trying to get the oil out, uh, which didn't work too successfully. I, I got a pipe with a syringe and I was trying to suck it out through the top didn't work because uh, initially I was going to just take the unscrew from the the tank underneath and change the whole oil and put a new filter on but I couldn't undo it somebody put it on with an air wrench so impossible to undo with a cheap Chinese toolkit um, and you go oh, why don't you get a better toolkit you tell me where to find one in Spain because um, the places I have around me are pretty crap um, it's all cheap tacky stuff um, nightmare um, nor my good tools are in the Philippines so that was that was a bit of a problem um, so Monday morning drop the kids off of school into the garage oil change or filter change 50 euros well worth it I was expecting to get charged more because we've got this crook of a mechanic in in the town but went to a main dealer main chain and bang no problems very reasonable <laughs> I'm shocked. UK is normally the other way around. The the back back street garages are normally uh, fairly okay. And then you go main dealer and you go, oh, 300 euros for something that only costs me about 50 quid normally. Um, but it's the other way around here. But then on Tuesday, I had to go into the town to get a padron, which is local register document uh, for the school processing for September. So we parked up in the town, come back, I uh, couldn't get a padron on because this queue was into the street and they basically shut shut the machine down saying we're not taking any more tickets for today. Um, but anyway, went back to the van, what, what, what wouldn't start, completely dead battery and I'm wedged between two vehicles. So a four kilometer walk later with a 75 uh, amp hour battery um, in 40 degree heat and it was all done and dusted. Uh, that, that was up and running. Now I could actually be pretty negative about it but the way I look at it now the car, the van is like a 50 year old woman that has just been to the hairdressing salon and had her nails done for her birthday. It's happy, it's running really well now and I don't have to worry about those bits and pieces uh, but one thing I have got is my um, service manual because I'm gonna get all the other bits and pieces done it's something I should have done a while ago, so it's one of those self-inflicted things that people go through from time to time. Now for something a bit more positive and interesting. I bought one of these the other day, it's a tri-board, tri uh, well, yesterday. It's a full face, well, full face snorkeling mask. Now, this just clips on the top here. And when you normally go snorkeling, you have to breathe in when you come up and then push the water out. This has a ball system, so you don't need to do that. You can breathe as soon as you go up. So this one is pretty good. Obviously the full face allows you to have a much broader view than it would with a normal uh, mask or a goggle, should I say. Um, so I've got that and it's one of these things I would say have a look online you'll see how many people have used these and they're all saying they're fantastic but obviously I live next to the beach so maybe tomorrow I'll, I'll test run this um, but I was going to say that if you're going to the Philippines I would get one of these there's fake ones of these around 
Um, try border the original ones. And the reason I go with the original is I know the quality is going to be all right. There's nothing worse than investing on something for a holiday or something. You get there and it's a cheap Chinese rubbish, you know, the strap breaks or something else, so the whole thing just ends up in the bin. Much better to pay, pay that little bit extra to get the proper ones. Um, I don't know what the counterfeit ones are like. Um, one of the things that is different, the original doesn't have a GoPro mount, but I was, which is a bit... Um, it would have been a good idea actually on the on the original to put the GoPro mount, but I'm not really fussed on that. Um, but I will say, be aware, if you're going to get one and it's a copy, test it before you go so you can take it back to the shop if it's crap. Because um, obviously there's a lot of work gone into the original ones, but it, you know what it's like when you buy a Chinese one. It's a bit like buying a Chinese wrench or a Chinese screwdriver when you start turning and it's turning and the heads come off inside the screw you know it's just rubbish so that, that's why I say I recommend with stuff like this because it's for your holiday for your trip you can't get one anywhere else um, or, an, or easily get uh, get one um, I recommend buying the buying the best for that trip but I'll be doing some underwater footage with the GoPro soon um, over the the sea behind me so that's what's happened this week. Um, so I'm happy about the um, Duterte taking his seat as president of the Philippines, but the British exit, I am not fussed if the UK actually left EU, if they'd actually bothered to think what they were going to do. This whole thing where they just sat there going, um, so let me guess right, so what do we actually let me go pen and paper so we need we need a strategy and an exit strategy so okay so it, can, can i google that can it can i have a quick look on the internet and see what that actually means what is an exit strategy um do we have anybody that knows anything about trade to cut trade deals oh oh we need experts experts okay i'll put experts on the list um but aren't our experts the same people that are represented in the eu Anyway, that's that's my little jab at that. But it, the, like I said, I'm not bothered in or out if they actually were any good. The politicians are crap. That's a, that's that's all I can say on that. I, I see it all the time in British industry. It's all gone down the toilet since probably the 50s, and this steadily got worse because we had these management courses and be a politician course where you say a lot without actually saying anything or doing anything. Downside of life in the UK. But I think the same across the EU, I think. Although I do see the Spanish Prime Minister saying a lot of stuff he shouldn't do sometimes. Because um, he said stuff that was negative about the Brits in Spain and then the following day contradicted it. So it was sort of like saying, well, you can all go back to the UK, then the following day going, no, no, everything's fine. Everything's the same. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I was just like, okay. <laughs> Why bother even getting into the argument? But anyway, thanks for watching.